Over the past few years, we have touched upon many of the amazing and often extremely ancient sites which dot our Earth. Many of these spectacular achievements, indicating to the countless specialists, archaeologists, geologists, and others involved their true story of antiquity. On several occasions, we have been confronted with compelling explorative analysis, which has often resulted in the retrieval of artifacts which have supported the claim of them surviving past cataclysm, often accompanied by an ice age. Our sharing of this data has regularly received a mixed reception. The Sphinx, for example, which shows clear evidence of surviving this past event, we saw that many were interested in this premise, yet not convinced of such claims. However, a gentleman known as Mario Bildraps has taken this theory and may have established it as a fact he has correlated the orientation of over 500 ancient pyramids and temples randomly spread around the world to what he claims is a 99% accuracy to the temperature changes during the last glaciation cycles. Most ancient structures, therefore, he has concluded, are hundreds of thousands of years old and not just a few thousand. Many of the pyramids and temples have been renovated over the millennia, new structures forming on top of older foundations, while the orientation of these foundations remain unchanged. Chichen Itza and Baalbek are two good examples of this practice. He states that the proof is mathematically backed up from start to finish. He adds, the orientation of a building is purely mathematical, because orientation is dimensionless or not materialistic. When we process the orientations of virtually all ancient buildings around the world, it reveals a profound discovery. About 57% of the 501 randomly spread ancient structures that were involved in this research accumulate massively in five clusters of together just 20 degrees or 22.2% along the intersection line. This line is also a purely mathematical entity that runs from our current North Pole to our current South Pole along a longitude of 47.1 degrees west. It appears a big chunk of his research has been directed towards developing a cardinal reference line, an imaginary line drawn upon the globe which could be used to match ancient structures to a past location of the cardinal points. Of course, if his mathematics can be peer-reviewed and ultimately found to be correct, he could truly be on to something. His research will not only push back the theories involving the chronological development of man, but also prove beyond doubt pre-Columbian voyage up to a half a million years ago, among many other startling realities. Additionally, his claims would be indispensable proof that the Earth's crust has moved significantly over the last 400,000 years without geology even noticing. They measured it, but didn't interpret it as a movement of the crust. They interpreted it as glaciation cycles. Logical when you believe the crust is fixed, but also, logically, indisputable proof there were pyramid builders once around who pointed their structures to a very ancient pole he says. Interestingly, he also added that you might possibly expect that if we do the same kind of research to the orientation of contemporary buildings, we would, for some odd reason, find a collective orientation that differs from north, likewise as the ancient buildings. But that doesn't appear to be the case. The collective orientation of contemporary buildings points almost exactly at our current geographic pole. You might say that the collective unconscious orients itself to the geographical pole, or as many people would say, to the sun. The more data you gather, whether it's in a region, one country, one continent, or the whole world, the more obvious it becomes that contemporary buildings add up to the geographic pole. There is no contemporary culture defined that has a preference for a specific orientation other than a cardinal orientation. It is undoubtedly interesting research, which we implore you to peruse further. We will keep you posted on future developments regarding Mario's work. The Oklahoma newspaper, The Oklahoman, would publish a story on June 28, 1969, titled, It's a Cracked Puzzle. Subsequently pulled from their archives, some astute researchers, however, have managed to track down this amazing article 
detailing an impossible discovery. It pertains to the excavation of an ancient floor, a tiled area which covered a truly vast distance, as if it was once the highly finished floor of an enormous structure. What is astonishing regarding this floor, however, is the date that countless specialists have concluded upon. The age of these tiles is simply baffling. According to the modern dating techniques used, this floor was laid well over 200,000 years ago, using a tiling mortar containing currently unknown elements. Delbert Smith, president of the Oklahoma Seismograph Company, and past president of the Oklahoma City Geophysical Society accompanied Derwood Pate, an independent petroleum geologist, in an exploration of the site. They finished their studies by stating that they were both very satisfied that it is not a natural earth formation and that it is indeed man-made. Smith and Pate even took core samples to make a microscopic investigation of the material makeup. The discovery of two holes through the rock strata heightened interests, and when measurements revealed the two holes to be exactly 16 and a half feet apart, or precisely one rod, they were convinced it was a deliberate artificial placement. The stone tiles were found to have been made from Permian limestone, laced with quartz grains. Geologists who focused their attention on the unusual flooring were all at a loss to explain the origin of the formation. John M. Ware, an Oklahoma City geologist, said, It simply cannot be explained within the field of geology. We need an archaeologist to give a final opinion. However, its age and origin may remain a mystery unless an archaeologist can be persuaded to take on the project soon. Just 20 days after these astonishing finds and subsequent realizations, construction workers moved in on the area, quickly demolishing the enormously ancient and vastly important floor building a foodstuffs warehouse in its place. Another intriguing point about the rock formation was that it contained marine deposits, indicating that it had once experienced submersion during an ocean flood. Pate said that the formation, 100 feet by 60 feet in area, was rapidly becoming a tourist attraction. People began flocking there and taking pieces of the rock away, he said. Just who built this ancient floor? Why did they build it? And was it really over 200,000 years old? Judging by the way this discovery was buried, it is certainly a possibility. The following amazing story was published by a David Campbell on a site known as ViewZone. It was a report regarding an incredible find within Oklahoma, subsequently chased up by David and his wife on location. Although the story gained very little media attention, the details along with the photographs of the event we have found extremely interesting, especially when we took into account our previous research regarding this strange ancient anomaly known as Waffle Rock, a half-buried suspected fragment of a once larger object of possible alien origins, which has remained half-buried, resting where it struck the Earth all those years prior now submerged underwater as the result of a controversial reservoir project which swallowed the stone and the town which had built up around it. David recalled the event with his wife on the site. They had just returned from a weekly 600-mile distribution route to find a somewhat urgent message from a reader in Colbert, Oklahoma. The caller gave some extremely vague instructions on getting to the place. No names and no callback details. Intrigued by the story, they figured the worst that could happen was that they would have a nice Sunday in the mountains. After getting to the vague location given, and after several hours of searching the woods, they eventually came across an extremely peculiar-looking, possibly cyclopean wall. Their initial investigations baffled them. They had never seen ancient stone structured in such a way. They highly suspected that it was of artificial origin due to the small apparent stones tightly interlocking, which made up its structure. It wasn't until they climbed atop that they must have realized the true scale of their discovery. From the other side, the stones appear to be a highly complex arrangement of interlocking different mineral or metallic compounds, often displaying a honeycomb structure, the layers of which a result of highly accurate cast layers stacked together to make interlocking blocks of iron-like stone. He recalled on the site, quote, 
What I saw there began to seep into my brain like ice water. Jumbled about in haphazard fashion were acres of squared, dressed, and notched stones. It was eerie standing on those shattered ramparts with all those tumbled stones like a desecrated cemetery. End quote. Were these strange fragments possibly once a single and very large object? They clearly share similarities with Waffle Rock, which is located in West Virginia. Are both these anomalous items connected? Were they once part of a very old and now semi-fossilized alien craft? What David has discovered may be another piece of the puzzle regarding the Waffle Rock mystery. Often, cases of strange rocks made up of strange metals are attributed to furnace activity. Yet I hope more investigation into this clearly huge and perplexing site is undertaken. How could this strange object possibly have come to be resting, broken into fragments within an Oklahoma forest? Another strange object made from a similar anomalous mineral metallic-like material is the ancient Baltic Sea anomaly. Are both of these strange artifacts ancient spaceships? More details regarding David and Sue's curious discovery is clearly needed. We will keep you posted.